If you have not read C.S. Lewis's Tales of Narnia, you will probably I not recognize this story, and your education is somewhat incomplete without reading all the tales. It would take you about two and a half to three hours per children's book to read the Tales of Narnia, and it is an exercise well worth doing. In one of the stories, called The Horse and His Boy, there is a young boy who finds himself lost, not knowing where he is going, on a horse that he can't control, who's walking across a mountain pass at night. And he suddenly realizes there's something <laughs> walking beside him and slowly he starts talking to the thing and discovers that it is Aslan, a lion who is representative of the Lion of Judah, Jesus Christ. He learns to have his voice as he listens to the voice of the lion. In our vociferous culture, with a cacophony of voices striving for self-expression as opposed to seeking truth, we may find ourselves inexorably drawn into the foggy midnight to ride with Aslan to com complete our story in a manner that creates a true message, which becomes our voice and shapes our identity. We can go through the same journey that Shasta did, as he learned from Aslan what his story should be. So, what is voice? Voice is a message that expresses what I really think about the truth in a trustworthy manner. It has substantive truth, not simply opinion. That is the biggest difference between a Christian voice and the voice of this world. Your voice needs to be significant to you. You need to care about it. Be passionate about it. Believe that the content of the truth is important. It needs to arise from the heart in a transparent, self-giving manner. So it isn't just a passing thought. It is an enduring contemplation that leads to a discovery of the truth that is very important. It represents who you really are, an authentic integrity, but it's much better if it gives voice to the voiceless, engaging others and attempting to heal the brokenness in this world. And it is best if it is expressed with eloquence and fire. If you can get that passion through your eloquence into our lives. So how did Shasta discover his voice? He became aware of his personal inadequacy. He was caught in circumstances that were beyond his control and he lost his sight. It is both dark, deep night and very foggy. And in that night and fogginess, he becomes aware of presence, vaguely aware and then definitely aware. Then he waits and listens and finally a tentative speaking. A vague identity is revealed 
and in relationship with the true voice, his full identity is really revealed. And then he names the voice as God's voice. He comes to fully recognize who he is in relationship with the living God. And that intimate encounter with the person who is the voice gave him his voice in this situation. So, some parts of discovering my voice within his voice. When I come to the end of my resources and abilities, when I come to a point of exhausted despair, I encounter the other, the living God, the voice, and in doing so, I enter a personal relationship with him in faith, believing. Then I tell him my story and listen to his interpretation. And in discovery of his identity and voice, I find the call, the mission of being and being entrusted with a message of truth. Then I encounter others who need the message, articulate in his words and my own words. I enter his story and he enters mine. And <clears throat> I become active. I do. I carry out the message and it creates identity through ministry in myself. That is a process by which I come to my voice. And you may leave out a couple of these steps. You may have others. This is simply one way of parts of discovering my voice within his voice. And as such, you may learn that too. Some things that are not voice. We have a spectacle-based society. Vociferation is often mistaken for voice. We want our 15 minutes of fame. Another not voice is loud chaos that is simply mouthed as a stream of consciousness. That is not becoming a message of truth. We need to slowly discover the truth, not simply shout out our message. Voice is not simply self-expression of my immediate thoughts. There are some virtues of true voice. It has substantive truth. There is meat to the content of the message. It is passionate and self-giving love, both agape and eros, both passion and self-giving. It has eloquence with grace, unmerited favor for the audience and those involved. It is authentic identification, not simply what is there for the moment. It is compassion also for the voiceless, those who cannot stand up for themselves. Those are simply some of those virtues of voice which you can echo through your own message.